It came, in fact, because of its tremendous abundance of oil. Um, what it, what this kind of abundance of oil creates in Venezuela, and it's something that we've seen before, is a sense by which anything is possible, right? And this is what we call um, uh, sort of the, the, the magical state. When the oil prices are very high, because we have so much oil, we feel like anything is possible. And so we go on spending sprees. And this is what we saw under the, the presidency of Chavez, tremendous amount of spending that are not invested in the productive apparatus, that are not invested in um, the industrial productive sector. Um, and in the case of, um, of, of Chavismo, the reason why that was um, not the case was because the, the larger logic of, um, especially after 2005, of a, of a socialism of the 21st century, um, was founded primarily on the idea that we're going to invest our resources in educating and um, providing uh, immediate resources for the population has been primarily left out, so health, food, um, and education, not so much the productive apparatus. That once oil prices came down, meant that because you were dependent on imports for everything, you no longer had any products, uh, you don't have any uh, cash to be able to buy imports. Um, and as a result, you have you know, uh, a government that is uh, losing a lot of revenue because it's paying huge amounts of debt that it incurred over the previous 16 years and not enough cash to be able to spend on imports like for food, medicine, et cetera. Well, partly I think it has to do with historic inequality, right? And so Venezuela starting from a place where poverty was already extremely high before 1999. And so the amount of spending that was done during the Chavez years was meant primarily to bring the population to a level of kind of semi-equality, right? And I think in the case of Saudi Arabia, the poverty levels are not, have never been quite that high that would require a kind of investment that's just basically to bring people up to a basic standard of living, right? The, most of the um, revenue that Venezuela has, the cash on hand, comes from debt because people... China especially gives huge amounts of um, cash to Venezuela on the promise that this oil will be extracted, not because mm -hmm. we're actually paying for oil that's already come out of the ground. Foreign reserves right now are basically, the last that I read was at $11 billion. But the fact is that um, its debt obligations are upwards of $65 billion, right? So the debt to GDP ratio is extremely, extremely high. Um, and what that means is basically that Venezuela because most of its assets, unlike, for instance, um, Saudi Arabia and other oil exporting countries, most of its oil producing assets are actually abroad. That's in oil liners, that is in refineries that it owns in Curaçao, that it owns in the United States. They are susceptible to seizure if Venezuela does not pay its foreign debts. So it has to prioritize paying its huge foreign debts over anything else, because the second that it on its foreign debts, then all of its assets abroad could be um, could be seized. Ironically, the greater during the Chavez years, because there's a tremendous amount of um, circulation of cash, because there's huge amounts of petrodollars, people had access to a lot of money, and so they just bought imports because that's mm -hmm. what they prefer, mm -hmm. right? And so why buy the lower quality domestic product if I can just buy the better quality imported product because I have cash on hand? So. Those industries never actually, you know, materialized into anything that was going to be sustainable over the long term. Um, in terms of things like milk, for instance, yes, you had sort of the you know state production of milk, but it wasn't keeping up with the demand, which was increasing, right? Because it was, you know, the, that's one of the paradoxes of having too many dollars in circulation mm -hmm. when the oil boom was really high. You know, people wanted more. And they were getting it more, and standards of living were rising. And you, you know, the caloric intake in, um, in 2008, 2009, it had risen twofold since you know, 15 years before, right? So people were eating tremendous amounts more, right? And so there wasn't a productive apparatus domestically that could sustain that. And while you could import, you could you know have people buy those imports. But now that you can't import, you have those demands, you have those you know, um, you know expectations, but you don't have the supply. Venezuela isn't now, it wasn't, and it won't be a socialist state. It wasn't under Chavez, it wasn't um, beforehand. I think that the most that Venezuela has aspired to be is a social democracy, right, in the sort of social democratic tradition. Um, to blame what's happening now in Venezuela on socialism is to have a tremendous degree of amnesia 
about how Venezuela has experienced and undergone this kind of crisis during moments of high capitalist um, intervention, mm. right? So in 19, the late 1980s and the early 1990s, um, you had a similar period of crisis. The difference is that because at the time, Venezuela was seen as a very stable, exceptional democracy in the region, people really didn't pay attention to Venezuela. And so there weren't you know, breathless reporters writing stories about mangoes and writing stories about one hospital and then become the story of every hospital, right? So there wasn't as much attention being paid, but the crisis was extremely severe. Mm 